Thanks for, um, it's Friday is it? Giving up yes, your busy Friday exactly. evening when you could be doing something really interesting like watching TV and listening to a ghastly Englishman with a big tummy is probably not what you had in mind, but anyway, here we are. And already, yeah, camera phone's off. Um, this was working before. Did something Ah, yes. Okay, well, I'm really interested in, um, in human beings. And uh, I've got a sneaking suspicion that a lot of us are becoming human doings. Uh, there's a interesting uh, pattern going on there, and uh, I hope uh, some of you <coughs> can recognise yourselves there, whether you're a boy or a girl. You know, we, we're sort of doing stuff, and in fact, that's not necessarily uh, what we need to be uh, be doing. So uh, I think very much the uh, topic of conversation tonight is, what is a human being? What is the difference between a dead body and someone who's alive? You know, medically, in terms of the chemistry and the, the physics involved and the, 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 the science of a human body, we've been left with a uh, medical training which just talks about the physical body and the physiology of the body. And so we're going to journey into some of the ancient traditional um, understandings which are beginning to start to merge now to form more of an integrative approach but um, still many of our lives are separate um, I'm sure some of you have got teenage kids or no teenagers and they're just separate from family you know there's communication problems so I'm going to talk a little bit about what I consider the sacred space that we have around ourselves and how it's possible for people to cut themselves off from nature and the implications of that. Oh, the wrong way. A um, little bit of a yin yang and a frequency curve. Well, you know, science meets spirit. I'm very interested in this particular edge, and I think there's a lot to be learned from from this, the, the new science that's developing around uh, the consciousness studies and so forth. Um, interestingly, I'm doing the right way now. My um, lab is uh, at a place called the World Peace Center, which is a UNESCO facility. Uh, it's at a university called MIT and not, uh, is it Michigan? Massachusetts. Massachusetts, probably. Mm -hmm. It's the of technology. What? Yeah, I know, we're Maharashtra yeah. of technology. Shameless, <laughs> true. Okay, I'm gonna get this right. Down is, uh, yeah, okay, and that's my lab here, down the bottom here. Uh, we have a fabulous facility which these guys have donated to us. I'm sure some of you have heard that the, um, the, um, the lab at Princeton closed down recently, the random event generator research they're doing, and some of these other guys have huge problems with funding and politics. Well, we've just have got the most fabulous insulation. This is the main boss of the university's office. And he's got us right under his wing. There's been many attempts to close us down and, you know, why are we doing this? And he's just said, no, we get all the computers, all the technology, all the you know, internet, everything we want is just laid on by these guys. And it's absolutely fab fabulous considering they're effectively, you know, welcoming in foreigners into their environment. And uh, I have to uh, take my hat off to... Um, uh, Professor Carroll, who's, who's been our sponsor. Okay. Um, some of my guides, probably should have Bernie up here now, <laughs> um, but uh, you probably recognize some of these characters. I uh, forget his name, what is it? Um, Deepak. 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 Yeah, Deepak. Deepak. Uh, this is Harry Oldfield, fabulous lady, Valerie Hunt. She wrote a great book called Infinite Mind. Um, oh. Some of my team uh, from the States, Anita and Edna. Anita is an imaging specialist, and she's prepared some of these slides. Mm -hmm. This is two great friends of mine, Nigel and Sue, who um, are Keelan photography experts, and uh, James Oshman. Anyone read Energy Medicine? Mm -hmm. yeah, I spend a lot of time with him. Beverly Rubick, the lady who coined the term biofield. And um, this is Harry Oldfield and Mayor Master Moose. Harry is the kind of scientist who's developed a lot of the devices I work with. And Dr. Moose, you can Google her, Mayor Her, Master Moose. She is the leader of the Zoroastrian University in India. F amazing woman who's basically downloaded me and um, initiated me in a lot of esoteric information, which I'm also going to be sharing with you. Um, 
bit of bit of background on the kind of things I've been up to. I was very interested in chaos theory, mathematics when it first came on the scene in the early 80s. Um, Benoit Mandelbrot was working at IBM and discovered fractals. Now, to give you an example of fractals, if I have a computer screen and I put in a program and an equation, I can plant a seed in a video graphic on my computer and watch it grow into an oak tree. In other words, something natural has a mathematical formula which when it's running, you can see it growing into something. I can change the coordinates slightly and it'll become an elm tree or an ash tree. I can put a different equation and get mountains so that those um, flight simulators, the really good ones that the pilots use, all the you know, mountains and valleys, that then the snow and the trees, they're all generated by fractal equations. And um, so what we've got is a kind of mathematics that underlies nature, nonlinear equations, and it's known as chaos theory. You can buy James Gleick's book if you want a basic introduction to it, or you can get the film that I made, The Colors of Infinity, which has got Arthur C. Clarke presenting, I think it's on Amazon, there's three or four different films in a video that we've got come out. Dave Gilmore, Pink Floyd did the soundtrack. It's kind of a groovy movie. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> I <believe> I said <laughs> that. <laughs> Stephen Hawking uh, is is in there, and uh, some really really cool um, scientists. Um, but uh, the important thing is, is this was very much a parallel to the early work that we were doing, and in fact, Oldfield in developing the PIP imaging system. Although I've never really pressed him about the algorithms that he uses to to see the, the biofield interactions, he says that they are fractal in nature. The algorithms. I uh, recently made a film called The Sufi and the Scientist. In fact, somehow um, I've been sort of 